Hi folks, how are you? I hope you're good. Um, it's the 13th of August 2020 and I'm just going to show you, um, just make a quick video for you to show you how I, I plant a, a no-dig garden. Um, I'm just going to plant a little garden just here between this bigger papaya and these other two papayas just there. So on that mound, it's only what about three meters long. I'm not going to dig it all. Of course, I'm going to use this sugarcane mulch. You can get it at your local Bunnings. It's really great stuff. It's 100% organically certified. There's quite a bit of sugarcane in there. It's packed in quite tight. It's quite compressed. So I'm hoping one bale should be ample. At Bunnings at the moment, it's gone up in price, unfortunately. It used to be about $13, but now I've noticed it's $16.50 a bale. So, I don't know, maybe with COVID, they're sort of justifying raising the prices of everything. But anyway, it's, it's pretty good stuff. Uh, that's what's sort of laying around on the ground here now. And it's, um, you know, a lot of this, though, is already rotted down, but... But yeah, this will benefit my papayas. I've got a fair few veggies here that I plan to plant. I've got some mint there. And these are veggie seedlings I bought. I've got some Tuscan kale. I've got the sweet basil, which is really nice stuff. I love that. Got a few pots of that. I've got a new plant I haven't planted before, a perennial lettuce. That should be nice. I've got some celery. That's always well worth growing. I've got some broccoli seedlings. That's some um, Green King broccoli. I've got two punnets of that. I've got some chives. I've got some bok choy there. Some more of that perennial lettuce. And that there is a perennial spinach. And this is a plant I haven't planted before. It's another Japanese plant called Mibuna. Mabuna? Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And then, yeah, I've got a larger broccoli plant there. Purple broccoli. More perennial spinach. More um, sweet basil. More perennial spinach again. I like that stuff. It's really nice. And I've got some Kang Kong. So yeah, I'll be planting all that in here, in these few meters here, and I just pile this mulch up, and I'll put a handful of um, potting mix in each hole where I plant each plant. I've got this stuff. Remember, I said before they say it's premium potting mix, but it's a bit cheap and nasty, really. It's not the best, but. It'll be fine for these vegetables. And also, just to give me a little bit of um, a little bit of a start for each of these vegetable seedlings, I'm going to use a few water crystals. So yeah, just a few. I've, I've already put it in the water there. Don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, that's the water crystals. So I just put like a little pinch around the roots of each seedling into a handful of potting mix. That'll be going into this straw. And so, yeah, I think I've covered just about everything. About what I'm going to do. So now I'm just going to switch off the can, cut that bale open. open and spread it out and then maybe I'll be able to set my um, tripod up and just give you a bit of a look at how I plant all these seedlings in this mulch and then as I water and fertilize these seedlings it's all any excess that leaks through it's going to be all feeding these papayas so I get, get a fair bit of efficiency and just make extra use of this sunny spot while I've got it here while the sun's coming in 
coming in on an angle from the north as you know as spring and then as summer goes on the sun will get summer comes closer the sun will get higher and higher and then it's pretty well it'll just come straight up over there from the east in midsummer and by then these papayas will be pretty tall and big leaves and be shading the ground out quite a bit by then I imagine but you know with some of the veggies it, it, some might die off from too much shade but a lot of them should keep going I think even in the shade they won't mind it it'll be hotter and brighter and they'll still get a bit of sunlight or get through so so yeah let's just see how we go that they're going to get a lot of sunlight for the next couple of months anyway okay so that's the mulch I've piled up now if you can see there the, the light and the shadows is making it a bit tricky but I've got it about six inches high it's roughly about six inches high there all that sugarcane mulch all ready to plant these vegetables Yeah, see there, r roughly about six inches high. Is that about 15 centimeters? Just on those few meters there. And that should be a nice bit of space for all those vegetables. And it will probably plan is it'll, it'll grow fairly thick in there yeah so I will set up my tripod now and try to give you a bit of an idea basically I'll just um, make a little pocket like that throw some potting mix in um, a little bit of that gel around the roots those water crystals around the roots of each plant and close the mulch over again that's basically it and then I'll water it Okay then, so here's my first hole, just make a bit of a hole in there, throw in a bit of this stuff, a of this potting mix, yeah, what do I start with, maybe that basil plant, the sweet basil. mix add a little bit of these water crystals It'll just give it a bit more of a start help it to hang on and that's it that's basically it and there it is ready to go rock and roll these celery plants just this just here under this big papaya this is probably going to be one of the shadiest spots pretty soon but I don't think the basil will mind it too much certainly this um, celery won't mind it at all it doesn't mind a bit of shade in many ways it grows better in a little bit of shade well it's certainly a lot less maintenance anyway so yeah as you can see I've got these little cubes of celery plants I 
again just make a little bit of a pocket in this mulch handful of potting mix a little bit of water crystals mix it in that potting mix a little bit and put the cell in and there it is cover it over with some mulch and that's all there is to it so simple if I can do it anyone can do it so can you see that there that shade sort of makes it a bit difficult doesn't it Another little bit of a pocket, a little bit of potting mix, some crystals again, and put the cell in, cover it over. Another little pocket. potting mix, water crystals, and put the celery in. Now I'm probably going to mix it up a bit. I've, that's three celery plants there. I'll, I've got another punnet of celery as well, so but I'll probably put some um, Broccoli and some other vegetables, mix that in with this. But um, I think you get the general idea, don't you? Here's some um, Green King bro broccoli. I don't know, in there's a bit tight, maybe, but. That'll do, another little pocket. Potting mix, crystals, and voila, planted. That easy. Now I've just got to do that with the rest of these. And plant out that whole area. It'll probably come out pretty tight. But they're, they're fairly close together. But that's okay because I'll be picking them from a young age. And yeah, I don't mind it being a bit bushy. Like eventually, within a few weeks, it'll start getting bushy. And I'll pick it hard like my other vegetable gardens. Okay, well. I'll give you a look at it when I finish now. I'll plant the rest of these things and again I need a I really need a GoPro on my head, don't I? And you can watch the whole lot, but it's a bit awkward and slow with this tripod. So you'll have to use your imagination a bit now about how I plant the rest of it, and I'll give you a look when it's finished. Okay, okie dokie, so here we go. See now I've just I've planted it all out. See and if I can do it with severe lung problems, anybody can do it. Yeah, it's quite thick. I probably should have um Spaced them out a little bit more, really. Turned out to be a bit more than I thought. Thought there was going to be. Once I separated a lot of those seedlings, some things like that perennial spinach that I just plucked, stuck it in in a clump. There's a few plants there, and that me boomer or whatever they call it just there. I just planted that in a clump. But some things I separated too, like, like um, that perennial spinach. 
a few of those weren't too difficult to separate or to separate a little bit I sort of doubled them, broke them into two um, the Kang Kong there I think maybe you can see that a bit better now that the sunlight isn't there like before I think with the shade and the sun together in the picture it might have been a bit hard to see it certainly was for my poor old eyes anyway I don't know if this camera picked it up but yeah that's it all planted out now I just oh yeah, that's that's my old that's another plat patch I planted a couple of months ago that's a baby spinach in clumps and some parsley the parsley just came up by seed so that was very nice and it's just powering on now growing really well so yeah now I just need to give it some water see so yeah the sugar cane mulch is only about six inches deep um, no digging just put it on top and the papayas are going to love that and love that top dressing of mulch and any water and nutrient that runs off from my vegetables will go down into the papaya, the deeper rooted papayas so just making good use of the space I've got what little space I have and that should be quite a nice little garden and you know, I imagine I'll be uh, picking that in about a month and in two months it should be quite bushy and by, yeah, by then these um, papaya might have even grown a meter or more in two months' time. This, you know, spring's only a couple of weeks away, and it feels like spring right now. Actually, it's just beautiful weather right now. I just thought I'd show you that little thing. I'm pretty sure that's a little lettuce. The only way that could have got there is the birds. They've brought it in from a neighbour's garden. So isn't that amazing? A little lettuce seedling. Just sprouted up there a couple of weeks ago. I just put a little bit more mulch around it. But yeah, a bird just brought that in. Because I haven't planted any lettuce seedlings here. Or any lettuce seeds. I've only got that perennial lettuce that I just planted today. So yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, one of my um, corporals there, you see it's yellowing up. I'm going to be picking those too soon. If the flying fox doesn't beat me to it. Even though it hasn't got much of a top branch yet. But in two months, I imagine that'll be quite big. Once it warms up, it's going to take off, I imagine. Especially, it's probably time to top dress a lot of these things too. Just get them ready for spring. And the warmer weather. So, I'll, I'll just see if I can give this a bit of a water. And I've still got the camera in my hand. Not a waterproof can, so I'll have to be careful with all this spot. Needs a water.
Yes, yeah, so I'm killing two birds with one stone now. Instead of just watering the papayas, I'm watering some veggies as well. Left a few of my tags there. Just to remind me what I've got here. That mabuma, whatever they call it. It's written almost exactly the same as the Mizuma, only there's a B instead of a Z. So perhaps it's similar, I don't know. But again, it's another Japanese vegetable. Is that's my guess anyway. Yeah, and this will need a good water. This um sugarcane mulch really soaks the water up. It acts like a sponge. And yeah, all the worms, there's a lot of worms in this soil. They'll all come up and start feeding on it and it'll break down pretty quickly. But yeah, it's very open and aerated so the roots can, can get in there very easily. And you know, it won't be for, it'll stay pretty much the same for about a month. Then it'll start breaking down, and so it, it, it works really well. Hey, so as the plants get a bit bigger, um, they really start benefiting from the broken down mulch. And so at first, it's going to need a fair bit of water to help them settle in. But those water crystals, that really helps, really helps them to hang on. It's not perfectly organic, this. You know, I'm sure the purists will be a bit annoyed to see me use water crystals and, and that potting mix wasn't organic. Um, but the, the sugarcane mulch is, it's 100% organic. And, well, from my reckoning, just a little bit of that won't, won't hurt it too much. It's going to wash through anything that's not so good in it. It's going to wash, wash through what little that's there that may not be completely pure. But that gel really is good actually. It really helps things like especially transplant. Transplanted veggies and especially in hotter, more sunny areas. Well, this is a bit shaded anyway so it doesn't stress the plants out as much. But yeah, I'm gonna be it's gonna be nice to try that papaya. The wine gold. I've decided I'm going to start calling them all papaya for to get international language just more easy to understand. Because here in Australia we call the yellows pawpaw. I was saying that before, and we call the reds papaya. But we've been calling we, we've stuck with pawpaw for the yellows because we've been calling them pawpaw for you know 80 years or longer, maybe since the beginning. Of, of Australian settlement, so and, and it, it just confuses everybody. I think everybody except for Australians. So I'll I'll, just, I'll call them papaya, a wine gold yellow papaya, just to keep it simple for everyone. And 
my Australian friends are just going to have to catch up because um, you know the differences of English in different countries and you, you've got to try and um, make compensate sometimes so everybody knows what you're talking about In the USA, they have a, di a different fruit they call a pawpaw. Apparently, it's very nice too, but it's, it looks nothing like a papaya tree. Papaya plant. <laughs> I always call them trees too, which is not exactly the proper terminology. They really are a plant. They're not a tree. Yeah, in America there's a tree. I think it's got a bit of cold tolerance too. It can sort of grow in temperate areas. I think it's native to the USA. And they call it a pawpaw. So, so that confuses everything, doesn't it? So yeah, from now on I'll try and call them all papayas. So yeah again these are my reds, these smaller ones. And those couple of bigger ones are my yellows. My yellow Hawaiian golds. And fingers crossed they're all going to bear a fair bit of fruit this summer. By summer autumn I should be picking a bit of fruit with some luck. Oh, that little wild lettuce seedling. Gonna be interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? When a bird brings you a new vegetable, brings in the seed of a new vegetable for you from a neighbor's garden. <laughs> Yeah, my poor old black sapote that's hidden underneath that Madeira vine. See, look, it's just completely strangled. So, you know, I've been saying it a few times now, I've really got to pull all that vine off. And give that poor old black sapote a chance to grow again when spring starts. And also, yeah, I've got that up there underneath that, I've got a, a dwarf avocado. It's trying to grow underneath that Madeira vine. I'm going to break all that off too. Can you see that Madeira vine? It's going to start just going crazy again soon. It's edible, like I was saying, but it's a real pest. It's a real problem weed. It just came in from a neighbour's yard and, and now it's nearly impossible to stop it. Yeah, so there you go. It's a real quick, simple, no dig garden. No mess, no fuss. $16 bale of sugarcane mulch. And away you go, you've got a bed like that. You can do that anywhere, you know, you don't have to put it on top of the, your, these papayas like I've done it. Which is simple, no dig. And every time you want to replant, just put another layer on. Like that 16 might sound dear to some people. $16, but 
with the price of vegetables here in Australia, I think it'd be a safe bet to say I'll get $200 worth of vegetables out of this. Quite safe at least, I think. I'll pick $200 worth of organic veggies out of this. Maybe more. So yeah, it's well worth it. And no digging if you're on some kind of disability. You know, it's pretty simple to do. Yeah, so I've just about given them enough water, I think. It takes a bit the first time, really, to really wet that uh, sugarcane mulch down. And the first few days, or even the first week or two, so, you know, I'm going to have to be out here every day and watering it till they get established. Once established, I might get away with not having the water a day or two here and there, but ideally they will like water every day. I need a little bit of water at least. Every day, ideally, to keep them nice and juicy and growing fast. Yeah, and it's not all that. Well, it gets a bit of sun. But it's definitely not all day sun here. I, I guess there'd be four or five hours of direct sun here. That's about all. And that's about all you need for a nice little garden. And so I, I find a bit of shade's nice to have, you know. Makes it easier to look after things. You don't have to water as much. You know, they'll grow bigger and better in full sun, but you've got to give them more water and more nutrient. Whereas in the shade, things can tend to go wild, like that spinach there, parsley. Um, I, I could skip watering them for a week, and they'd hardly look back. Because they're quite established now. It doesn't hurt to splash a bit of water on them every day. It makes them grow that little bit better. But yeah, as you see, it's one thing I'm going to have to watch is that papaya there. I'll, I'll zoom in. That's getting a little bit too much water already, actually. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. I might have to hold back on watering a bit. not overwater the veggies too much in case I overwater that papaya but I think once I start adding more nutrients too I think the papaya will get over it because everything's just about ready for a liquid fertilizer actually all these trees give them a liquid fertilizer with trace elements and the trace elements is um, very necessary around here because the soil is very sandy, the, nu the nutrient disappears very quickly. So yeah, it likes the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, of course, but it doesn't hurt to add extra trace elements as well to this garden because of this sandy soil. And I often say, like, you know, you once a year in perhaps most soils is, is all, you know you only need to apply trace elements once a year in most soils but this very sandy soil I, I recommend doing it at least twice a year and actually I tend to I give a half dose 
instead of a full strength dose of trace elements to give a half dose you know three or four times a year and I find it works better just keeps everything more healthy okay well that's just about it If you don't do much gardening, I hope that inspired you to have a crack at it. It's pretty simple really, isn't it? There's nothing to it really. Nothing to it. And I'll keep you updated on how this goes over the next couple of months. So yeah, thanks for watching folks. And I'll see you next time. Bye.